In this video I'm going to look at colorimetry. So just a few simple things about colorimetry and then we'll go into how we actually use it. So the first thing is it's a technique used to determine the concentrations of colored compounds in solution. And it's a really useful way to continuously monitor the rate of a chemical reaction. So if you imagine you've got a colored product being formed obviously that colour will intensify as the product forms and obviously the opposite is true if you've got a coloured substance that's reacting away its colour, the intensity of its colour will decrease over the course of the reaction. So colorimetry can be used to measure the colour of a compound and as you'll see we can actually translate that into concentration and rate. So a couple of examples, so we've got this reaction here, the reaction between propanone and iodine and you can see that the iodine is a brown substance so over time the intensity of the brown colour will decrease because you're forming colourless products. And an example of where you've got a coloured product forming, so we've got this one here, the reaction between thiosulfate ions and acid, you can see they're both colourless and one of the products there, that sulphur, is a yellow solid so over time that yellow colour will intensify as the concentration of sulphur increases. So how does it work? Well the first thing you need to do is set the colorimeter to measure a particular wavelength of light, the absorbance of a particular wavelength of light and it needs to be a wavelength that is only absorbed by this coloured reactant or product. So it mustn't be able to be absorbed by any other substance in the reaction. And then the change in absorbance over the course of the reaction is monitored and you can use that to measure the rate of the reaction. So we'll run through the procedure now. So on the right there is a picture of a colorimeter. And so the first thing you would do is you would set the colorimeter to absorb that particular wavelength of light. Remember, it's a wavelength of light that only the coloured substance absorbs. You would then calibrate the colorimeter. And how would you do that? Well, the first thing you'd need to do is measure the absorbance at zero concentration. So what you'd do is you would put some distilled water in this little plastic container here that sits in there and the light shone through there so you would put distilled water in there and measure the absorbance and that's obviously your zero concentration mark. The next thing you would do is you would measure the absorbance using solutions of known concentration and then you would carry out the reaction that, that you're wanting to follow the rate of and at regular intervals you would take out samples and measure the absorbance at that particular point. And sometimes you might see in textbooks that it's quenched or it's, it's put in ice water and that obviously stops the reaction at that instant. So obviously once you've got your results you need to process them. So the first thing you do would be to plot a calibration curve using those absorbance readings for the solutions at known concentration not forgetting the distilled water result and so you'd get something like this. So you can see that the concentrations, the known concentrations have been 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4 and so on up to 1.0 moles per decimeter cubed. So once you've got the calibration curve you can use it to convert those absorbances that you measured at those regular time intervals into concentrations. So you've got let's say an absorbance there, you can read along and get the concentration that way. And then obviously what you can do from that is plot a concentration time graph and then calculate the rate at any point by drawing a tangent at that point and calculating the gradient. 